and welcome back. We're officially going into our first segment of the show this morning, and it's a primary discussion with the Belizean woman elected to head Siska. That being said, we have with us via Zoom Anita Zentina. Sorry, she's the Secretary General of Siska. Good morning, Miss Anita. Good morning, Sani. Good morning, Audrey. Hi, good morning. Let's begin. How are you this morning? We're good, we're good, we're, we're perfect. We're good, and, and congratulations on your appointment. Congratulations, indeed. Thank you, thank you. Let's begin by, first of all, talking about what this achievement means for you, and then we can discuss it in the Belizean context and in the regional context. Well, you know, Isani, it's really, I say, God's plan for me, because I had uh, retired, actually. I've been home in Benke for the past year and a half. And the opportunity through the government of Belize came up to say, to invite me to submit my CV to a process that would end up in the selection of a Belizean to head the, the system. And I was, you know, a little hesitant because my mind was made up that I was coming home and I was very much engaged already in, in doing things here at home. And so when it came closer to the time um, and I was invited for an interview, it was like, oh my goodness, this is getting even closer. But I welcome the opportunity. I, I appreciate the invitation of the government to submit my CV. I know that God has bigger plans for me. And so I embrace it at this time in my life and I want to to know that I want to reassure myself, as 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 the I opener said this morning, surround my people with people who um, help me to continue to believe in myself that I can um, make a difference in the lives of people, not only now in Belize but also in the region. Well, that's very good. that's very good to know. So, a lot of Belizeans will not know what Cisco is about. Mm -hmm. So, it'd be nice if you tell us a bit more about Cisco and what your role would be now as Secretary Secretary General. What will be expected of you? Well, Cisco is an arm of Cica, which is the uh, Integración Social de Centro America. But Cisco is the arm that deals specifically with social integration of the region, as well as helping. Um, the individual countries to, to do just that social integration at the national level. Um, there are many other um, secretariats within SICA that deal with issues of um, economy, environment, and all of that. But this one specifically deals with um, issues of social development and, and social integration. Um, and and yes. your, role, uh, your role as Secretary General? As Secretary General, it, it is the person who leads the processes, who leads um, to ensure that whatever the countries at their specific times are, are facing in terms of social issues, that we bring them together as a region and help the countries to actually achieve um, what they are hoping to achieve as a region and, and the impact being felt nationally as well. So given okay. that, um, you're, I know you're new as Secretary General, mm -hmm. but do you have any idea what are some of those issues now that will be dealt with regionally and individually in the countries? And I'm asking that thinking now that <laughs> COVID-19 is a reality, so I don't know how that has factored into the agenda of Cisco. Yes, well, in recent years, um, a social integration policy has been developed as well as an integrated um, social development plan. Mm -hmm. But what presently is being worked on is, is a plan to, um, recon to recover um, from the pandemic, to reconstruct, and also to build resiliency in the areas of social development, particularly, Audrey, because you, you know that whatever is happening now will have greater impact on the most vulnerable. And so the, this plan that is in process, I, my role will be to take this plan, I believe, to another level, which will result in, in actual projects and programs. And the biggest challenge um, for me, I believe, 
will be to, to, to seek funding for, for, um, for the projects that will emerge from this process. What is, interesting, what is interesting is that when you yeah. look at, for instance, if we look at COVID-19 as you brought yes. up as perhaps the example here, we are looking at it from an individual perspective to suggest that it's each country for his own, right? Or for her own. Um, when you look at it from a regional point of view, if you're looking at Central America, for instance, how do you bring together, for instance, Belize and Guatemala or Belize and Costa Rica in the context of each country having to deal with their own issue of COVID-19, um, trying to deal with you know, the public health system, uh, the, the social aspect of it, and what have you. How, do, how would you bring all of them together to say, well, let's have one conversation or one direction as a region? But, but, but we can is that it's just at what level um, the interventions would be. For example, um, all countries in the region right now, um, I, am, I am sure will see an increase in poverty. Mm -hmm. um, already seeing increases in unemployment. Um, we're seeing um, violence in the homes. We're seeing all these social issues um, that are relevant to all the countries. It will be at what level um, will the interventions be needed? Um, and how do we approach them from an integrated um, way so that the impact in making the difference in the lives of people will be greater um, because we know the issues were there before and now um, they have been accentuated in terms of, of some of the issues that I mentioned. So yes, um, we are at different levels in each country, but the, the, the interventions would, while they necessarily coming from a regional perspective at the country level, the interventions would begin at different levels. Just for clarity, when these um, interventions are formulated, is it the government that decides them or is it that CISCA decides an issue and brings it to the government? Who creates the plan or is it a combination? It's, it's a combination. It, governments bring issues. They, they, this, the system that I will serve in is... Um, is serving the Council of Ministers of Social Development in the region, okay. including the Dominican Republic. And so um, the ministers meet to look at what are the challenges they are facing in their country. They bring it um, through their meetings. The secretariat then takes it on, and the secretariat looks for the links with the other um, secretariats within the CISCA system, as well as who um, our key partners to move these processes forward. So it is, it is both ways because as the Secretariat, we also need to be involved in looking at best practices, looking at <clears throat> doing research to see what is it that is emerging. Um, one of the issues that also comes to my mind in, in all of this is the issue of migration. Um, because that affects all countries. And so how do we integrate the issue of migration in all of this at this time? Okay. Oh. Well, you know, one of the issues will be, uh, you mentioned unemployment and poverty, <coughs> but you know, one of the issues will be mental health. That, that clearly is like across the board, I imagine, in all these countries. It's not right. in Belize. That right. And, and there is, there is <coughs> Comisca who specifically deals with health issues, but working very closely um, with, as I said, trying to do the integration of the different um, arms of CISCA, I am sure um, that that is going to be key in the, um, in the process of developing this plan of um, recovery, reconstructions, and, and resiliency, because that's where um, the mental health issues are, are very key, you know? Let's go back a bit to what you mentioned earlier about migration being one of these uh, issues or factors to deal with. I know that prior to this pandemic, persons were moving around within the region from country to country in terms of relocating. But now with COVID-19 as a part of our everyday existence, 
I believe we would be looking at persons coming into the country closer in terms of their background and that sort of stuff from a public health perspective. Um, how, how do you look at such an issue from, from your seat as the Secretary General? How do you factor in migration into a situation where um, we're dealing with a pandemic and everything has to have some kind of uh, public health implication? Right, and, and you know, Isani, it, it is very difficult, but we also need to remember that the work that, that we do is underpinned by human rights. Mm -hmm. And so that also has to be respected and integrated into the process. And so as countries um, in the region, we have to develop what will be those protocols, those policies to, to ensure that we are not violating the rights of people but at the same time that we are respecting the laws and policies of each country. So it is not easy, um, but it has to be done. We, we have to confront the issues that will arise because of this pandemic. And um, it, it is a big challenge. It is a big challenge. And I, and I say to myself, um, I am going to be taking up this, this job at a time that it is the most challenging, I believe, yes. Yes. In, in the region and in the world. But I am confident that the support of the technical and administrative team and, and all the, the, the secretariats in the, in, this, in the SICA system, as well as the support, support of the countries, and in particular Belize, that we will be able to, to address the many, many, many challenges that are arising at this time. Well, I know I'm thinking of one of the major challenge would be funding. Yes. I mean, because imagine yes. the economy is as it stands. I mean, Belize's economy in the first, second, and now the third <coughs> quarter has seen a major decline. The last report said that we're at 23.3% 23, 23 below what the development of our GDP would have been in previous year at the same time. So we know our economy is suffering because so much is not happen happening, productivity and everything is not happening. I imagine the same is going to be happening in the other countries. So when you talk about funding, is it the funding is usually the government seeks the funding for social programs? Or is it other international agencies? How, how does that operate when it comes to funding programs for Cisco? At the regional level, the, the Secretariat would then undertake um, that responsibility to seek fund for the regional um, processes that, that we present. And yes, um, all the regions will be competing for funding from the few funding agencies that exist out there. But I believe that um, one, of the, one of the things that comes to my mind is that we will have to be creative and innovative in the way we present, in the way we um, identify the priorities and in the way we, we, we seek those funds and, and how do we um, interact and how do we present um, these projects to, to funders. Because you are right, all the countries at this time are facing what the, the executive um, secretary of ECLAT calls it um, an economy of war because it's, it's similar, you know, we, we are all facing, say, facing this situation and so we have to be creative, we have to be innovative, but at the regional level, um, the Secretariat along with the other partners it is responsible for um, identifying funds to, to implement the projects that, that we, um, our governments determine our priority at this time. Well, you're indeed yes. taking this on at a very challenging time because when I think about how governments have gener generally operated, when there's a time to do a budget cut, sadly, it's usually the social services that suffer mm -hmm. first. That's because true. we tend to not see development of people um, propelling the development of all else. And now, more than ever, because of COVID, development of people, their mental stability, their ability to cope with things, is important if they're to participate in the economy and help. And I'm thinking also, OK, if the trend has been to cut out so social services, when you talk about cre being creative, it's finding ways to, the things that will not be cut out, that is a must, how we incorporate it. And I'm thinking like, our educational system has changed, but how can we use the current educational system in place 
to promote some of the things you want. I mean, a, a lot of ideas going through my head. I mean, the creativity really has to come out. And right, I, really, right. I really wish you the best, you know, because you have to think out of the box and you've taken on exactly. this challenge at a, at a critical time, very critical. It is, it is. But you know, um, Audrey, I, I retired from the public service about 12 years ago mm -hmm. and I went into ministry. I worked with the Sisters of Mercy for nine years and I believe that, that I was there for a reason and I'm very optimistic. I am, people might say, oh, I have to do my part, but my God will lead me to where he wants me to be and to get the things done that I need to get done. Man, that sounds good, you know. It really sounds good. It sounds like you have the administrative background. I know you have a vast experience in social services in Belize. Mm -hmm. But now hearing this piece, I didn't know that you went into ministry. It goes back, Isani, to what we were talking about, you know, the, the um, quotation for today, the eye opener for today, you know, where you need to surround yourself with people reaffirming. Because I, I mean, I wish, you, I wish you the best, but it's going to be challenging. But having that spiritual background and having that network to fall back on is going to be critical at this time because as much as we all want to be optimistic and positive we have to accept sometimes that we will feel down the challenge will be a lot but we need to know how to still push forward so really all the best i mean will my final question will you be based here in belize or is there a particular seat for your secretariat within the region the, the um the office for the secretariat is in Panama, mm -hmm. but as we all know, the hub of SICA is in El Salvador. So, um, yes, I will leave Belize. I wish I should be um, heading to Panama in, in January, but the the interaction between Panama and Salvador is very uh, critical, and so I'll be between those two countries as well as working in the individual countries in the region and um, not only Central America, but also the Dominican Republic is a part of this, um, of this group. So you actually have to relocate to your... I also, I, uh, yes, I have to go. I, I will be one of those migrants. Wow, <laughs> amazing. But I think, I really think you have what it takes and it also helps we're talking about Cisco. And if you notice, Belize is the only English speaking mm -hmm. country in it. So I know you're, you're fairly fluent in Spanish. So, I mean, this job was cut out for you. I just hope you realize it's cut out for you at the most challenging <laughs> time. Oh, I, I am very <laughs> aware of that, Audrey, but I, I, have, I have who to hold on to. <laughs> yes, yes. Perfect. Well, All right. I'm proud of you. I'm proud to know that that's where you're going. And, uh, you know, as a woman, I always love seeing that our women are stepping forward and taking up leadership position. It doesn't always have to be in politics. Mm -hmm. You have to be where change can be effective. And I really wish you all the best. And we hope to hear more and that you are able to make the impact we need at this time because we really need a lot as a country and a region and a and people. As a region. Yeah. Thank you so much. I want to take this opportunity to thank all friends, family, even people who I don't know who have sent wealth, wealth wishes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was overwhelmed. Um, uh, that emotional intelligence came into play Audrey, at this time <laughs> in my life because there's so much outpouring of love and support. Of course, I, I did read a couple of the negative ones, but, but I'm at a place where I, I focus on the positive. Yes. And so um, that gives me great hope. Um, I, I come to realize the impact I've had on people's lives. You know, sometimes we don't say it, um, but those who shared um, about the great impact I've had on their lives, I want to thank them. I want to thank everyone who's supported in this process. I want to thank the government of Belize for the trust and confidence of submitting my, my CV. And thank my God, because I know it's in his hands. And thank your and dogs. You. Your dogs are cheering you on too. They are are you heard them? <laughs> We could hear them. Sorry. <laughs> All the okay. best, right. Sanita. Take care. I will miss them. <laughs> yes. All right. Thanks a lot once again, Miss Anita.
and safe travels whenever that time comes for you to depart the country. Yes. We are going to take a commercial break, and when we return, it's to talk about Belizeanizing history. We're going to have a panel that's going to be joining us virtually to have this conversation. Stick around.